These guys are going to be going 60 feet in the air. What was that? Just sent it and it worked out. And I qualified first. The ramps were all bigger. We were going to make this have open qualifying. Hopefully I can make it on to the, the World Games. Worked really hard. The payoff feels really good. Pretty much fair game from here. We've got the ramp set up for everybody to come ride. Yeah, you're definitely only for a trait. Absolutely amazing. And here we go, double front flip. Time for World Games. This is a birthplace of Nitro Circus. Welcome to Nitro World Games Rewind, the journey that takes you from the inception of this amazing event all the way to the final death-defying jump in front of 30,000 screaming fans. It was truly a game-changing competition. For the first time in action sports history, you'll see inline and scooter in the same field as skateboarding, BMX, and freestyle motocross. We'll meet the stars of the contest, find out why Nitro made the decision to include them in the biggest action sports event ever, and showcase the two events that ran before the NBC telecast started in their entirety. Going for that 16-20, oh. and he landed it. Oh my goodness, Jake. What are the judges going to think of that? He's the only guy to ever do that. Oh, oh wow. my goodness. Misty flipped to backflip, which means Dave Lang has landed all three of his tricks. Ryan Williams, Nitro Circus, household name. Like, like I said earlier, he qualified first place in BMX. The Nitro World Games has been brewing in the minds of Travis Pastrana and Mike Pora for over 10 years. They didn't always have a name or a location or a date, but they always had a vision. A vision to revolutionize action sports competition as we know it. To turn the same old format that has been in place for 20 years upside down, shake it up, and bring something all new to the table. It's an interesting concept because action sports started and, and really evolved and got so big so quick because it was all about freedom. It was about this lifestyle. It was about this, this fun, chaos, no limits. Sometime in the, the early 2000s, it became more about the tricks. Um, so you took from kind of this free ride and you really had these ramp kids that came out that didn't like to go to the desert, didn't like to shovel. They just they worked on a specific set of ramps, which, which in my opinion took a lot of the creativity away. I want to give the people like me who, who wanted to be creative, who wanted to try new stuff, who wanted to, to see what was possible, um, to just every event, just have your mind blown by trying something that's never been tried and kind of going for a big air feel. And I feel like that's what World Games is all about, it is changing action sports back to kind of what made it popular originally. Years of planning, working, scheming, schmoozing, searching, and dealing, it all came together. Their dream became a reality, and this dream suddenly had a home base in Utah, a network to air on, support from needed avenues, and finally, a name. NBC was so huge for Nitro World Games. It was honestly the final piece of the puzzle. We wanted this to be seen by the masses. We didn't want this to be a niche event. This had to be huge. It had to be primetime. It had to be NBC. The theme of the games and a word you will hear throughout is progression. In every sense, Travis and Mike wanted to progress the tricks, the ramps, the formats, the riders, the judges, and the scoring. If they wanted it to be unlike any other competition, they had to start somewhere and it had to be big. From the start, the world knew this was different, beginning with the first ever open qualifying for a major competition. Now any pro-level rider in the world could qualify for the biggest action sports event ever. We decided first up that even though it was going to be very expensive, we were going to make this have open qualifying and then everyone had the chance to go to the trials and had a chance to get to the event. I absolutely love the open qualifiers. The amount that that brings to our sport, it's so big for anyone who wants to have a shot that would otherwise have just completely been overlooked. My name is Brandon Schmidt. I'm 23 years old from Stockholm, New Jersey. I'm a professional snowboarder, but I'm here competing in BMX Best Trick. My goal for today is to qualify for World Games, which will be in July. Jerry McNeil out here at the Notch World Games Qualifier. I'm going to go through the tricks that I have and uh, put down a good run and see if the judges like it, and hopefully, uh, hopefully I can make it on to the, the World Games. These guys and so many more from all around the globe showed up to try to earn a spot in the games.
not exactly what I expected. I see guys setting 1080s for fun and double backflip with with tricks in the backflips, and and it's just unbelievable the level of riding that's going down right now. Worked really hard, so for it to pay off feels really good. Really good. Really excited, super happy. I just won the first Nitro World Games qualifier. It was a tough competition. Man, I'm celebrating today. And just as they hoped, some unknown athletes from all over the world not only qualified, but proved they are actual contenders for the World Games. And you can see the sense of accomplishment on their faces. Another aspect that Mike and Travis knew they wanted to progress was the ramps. They had visions of new ramps that would allow the athletes to attempt bigger and crazier tricks than ever before. The ramps, without doubt, are the most important part of, of what we've been able to achieve and what we're going to achieve. We spent a fortune and spent years developing the ramps for, uh, for Nitro World Games. In addition to raising the level of action, the Nitro team also raised the level of safety on the landers. The philosophy is if the ramps are gonna be much bigger and the tricks much sketchier, the level of safety has to match the level of consequence. The bigger and the higher, the more you can do, but also um, the more chance of injury. Uh, the jumps, heights, and the distances that we're working with um, are humanly impossible to, to crash from. So my goal was to make the landings as safe as possible. The safer the landing is, the bigger you can make the takeoff. So where's, where's the end? And the answer is, there isn't. There's no ceiling to this. So we can go as big and as high as we want to go, but we have to do it in a progression that allows these athletes, and not just the Nitro athletes, not just the guys that have come to my house, but every athlete and the kids that are growing up to have an opportunity to practice this and evolve with these ramps. It wasn't just the athletes and the ramps that were different. The event itself was promoted as being completely different from anything like it before. The biggest difference in Nitro World Games and pretty much every other event is that the ramps were all bigger, they were all new, they were all different. The landings allowed the guys to try stuff they would normally never even think of because if you crashed, uh, you were hopefully gonna be able to get up. It's still gonna hurt, it's not perfect, but I think this is what made the best big air contest that's ever been held. And it's not trying to, to change action sports, it's just trying to say, this is the big air championships. If you wanna do something bigger and better that no one else has ever done, here's your platform, paint your own canvas and let's do this. They didn't stop there. Typical action sports contests consist of skateboarding, BMX, and FMX, but Mike and Travis had two other disciplines they wanted to include. They knew it wouldn't be easy to get the whole community to jump on board. We got a lot of pushback from the industry, but you know, we're not trying to revolutionize action sports. I just wanna see the biggest and the best and the most passionate people. And I tell you what, every single person that was there for scootering, every single person that was there for inline were the most passionate. Um, they had that same vibe, the same feel that all of us had at the first X Games. Scooter and inline brought all of that and they did it humbly and dominated you know, the action. When we come back, we're gonna take you behind the scenes of the days and moments leading up to the main event. We have some never before seen exclusive footage from practice for inline and scooter, as well as footage from the semifinals from all the other sports. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back to Nitro World Games Rewind. Leading up to the event were some of the most progressive and challenging days in action sports. This was the first time all the athletes were in one place throwing down for a chance to stand on the podium. They were all feeding off each other and not just in their own discipline. The first day of practice and people are just here sending it like people I've never even heard of, tricks I've never even seen, it's just gnarly, it's, it's crazy. I've 
literally just had my mind blown within five minutes and three jumps of dirt bikes hitting this ramp that takes you 30, 40 feet in the air. I don't even know how high. And they're doing tricks I've never even thought of. So many of the best events have highlighted everything. And, and before it was okay to highlight semis, quarterfinals, um, everything all the way up. But the riders are getting so good and there's, there's not as much separation between first and last. So for us, I said, okay, let's allow these riders to qualify. But when we show this on live television, when we do this format, let's make it as quick and as fast paced as possible. Because you know, some guys love watching skateboarding, some guys love watching motocross, and a lot of guys don't like to watch maybe the, the other sport. So we can't have two hours of coverage on every one of these sports. So let's show them the best, let's show them the finals, and let's move on to the next sport because that is the attention span of what we know works from traveling around the world doing live shows. The semifinals for Skate Best Trick, BMX Best Tricks, BMX Triple Hit, and FMX were held the day before the games. Although they weren't televised, the intensity was off the charts. All the riders knew that this was their chance to make it to the big show, and they did not disappoint. Let's get right into it with BMX Triple Hit Semifinals. stoked I am on my run. I just sent it and it worked out and I qualified first and I'm, I'm so stoked. I can't imagine what's going to go down tomorrow if this is what's going on in, in semifinals. It's going to be nuts, man. Tomorrow's going to be insane. Our top eight finalists for BMX Triple Hit have been determined. Now BMX Best Tricks semifinals are underway. Oh, I'm feeling buggered, but over the moon, qualified first, landed all my tricks, getting ready for tomorrow. Skate semifinals consisted of some big air veterans and some young guns, all determined to qualify for the main event. FMX pros threw down in the semis for only eight spots in the final. First front flip today, Jeff. First front flip trying here. When I land perfect, and I did it. So I'm happy. Clinton Moore bowed out of the event early due to injury, giving Harry Bing a wild card entry into the event. I come into this as a wild card, and I'd prepared for it, and uh, stoked I got through that uh, run alive. And uh, through hitting the front flip ramp also, that definitely took a lot of guts. But uh, I'm stoked I'm still in one piece and conquered it. From the semifinals, I think Brandon Lupos uh, really impressed me. I mean, 1080 on the middle hit of triple hit was, was absolutely amazing. 
uh, Brandon Schmidt qualifying second. Um, you know, I mean, Gavin Godfrey, no one expected him to be up there, and it's Schmitty and Godfrey, Curtis Downs, all these riders that, you know, had been saying, hey, we should be invited to X Games, next game saying, who are you, to having these open qualifiers where they just absolutely dominated. Uh, but even guys that, that didn't qualify that well, um, you know, Christian Meyer, I think, was, was a huge, huge surprise for me and and that young kid he's going to win world games in the future if that was just the semifinals the finals are going to be insane inline and scooter did not have a semifinal they each had five pre-qualified invited riders chosen from their respected disciplines these guys had the days leading up to the event to get ready their practice sessions were as intense as a contest because all the riders got to see what everyone else was throwing For me, inline was something that I had always enjoyed watching that was dropped because it wasn't cool enough. Scootering was something that, you know, the scooter kids take a lot of flack wherever they are, but they're the most progressive and innovative guys in the world. I mean, our Willie is prime example. He jumps on a bicycle without ever really riding and is probably, if not the best, one of the best and most dominant bicycle riders in the world. And he's not even a bicycle rider. The skate guys are going bigger than, than any of the skateboarders. I'm like, this is a big air event, and you couldn't have an event without having scoots and boots. When we come back, we'll meet the two men that impressed Travis and Mike so much that they included inline and scooter in the World Games. We'll also meet the other competitors that would love to stand above them on the podium. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back to Nitro World Games Rewind. When drawing the blueprints for the World Games, Mike Pora and Travis Pastrana always wanted it to be progressive and different. They drew from their past experiences, from filming to training to touring. One thing they agreed on was to include inline and scooter in the first ever Nitro World Games. Here's where I cop so much criticism of people saying, you've got to be kidding. You can't have scooter and inline in proper action sports events. They're not, they're not real action sports. And we just had to say, get, stick to our guns and just say, just watch it. I have to be honest, without Chris Haffey, inline skating would not have been at Nitro World Games. But when I see Haffey and his passion and uh, you know the guys that, that he brings in and just even going to skate parks around the world and seeing what Haffey can do, it's almost a forgotten art. Obviously, Chris Haffey has influenced Nitro enough to include an inline event in the games. Let's meet Mr. Haffey. My name is Chris Haffey. I'm from San Diego, California, and I'm a professional rollerblader. I've been rollerblading since I can remember, but I really got into the doing it the way I do it now when I was 11 years old. I played ice hockey in Atlanta, and a couple friends from the team brought me to a skate park, and it was about over from there. When I first got involved with Nitro, I was a bit nervous the first day I went in to as coming in as a rollerblader and not knowing where everyone else stood on that. But the thing was, I wanted to hit a ramp that they offered me to hit for so long that I didn't care. I was like, I'm gonna go hit that thing no matter what I have to go through to do it. Well, when we finally got like the actual stamp of approval for rollerblading that was in 100%, to be put back on the stage, you know, with all the other action sports to a mainstream audience is so big for rollerblading that it was, it was nothing but exciting. expecting rollerblading to put on a show that no one's expecting to see. I think that's the biggest thing for me is rollerblading as a, as a whole. I don't care who wins this contest. As long as the sport shows up and proves that it should be on that stage with those other sports, then that would make me the happiest. It's hard to say, man. There's a lot of guys that are going to throw down. Dave Lang has been doing a big air show in Germany, so he's he's had a lot of experience on ramps like this. There's a kid, Roman Abrade, from France, who trains with a bunch of skiers, and I know he has some tricks that we haven't seen before. And CJ Wellsman from Australia is so stylish that, like, if he can put some of these bigger tricks down with his style on it, on the day, it could be anyone's ballgame. 
As good as Chris Happy is on inline skates, Ryan Williams is at the top of his game on a scooter. We were told our wheelie was the best in the world, but at the time I had a little bit of a negative connotation towards scooter riding. And within an hour of watching our wheelie in practice, I was already like, yeah, okay, he's, he's in the show, not only tonight, but let's sign this guy. He needs to be in the show every night. My name is Ryan Williams, also known as R. Willy. I'm from the Sunshine Coast in Australia, and I ride scooters and BMX. Basically, I was a 17-year-old scooter kid that absolutely loved Nitro Circus, and uh, as soon as I got the phone call from Nitro, I was uh, on a plane down to Albury, where they let me do practice. They just said, here's a 50-foot ramp, here's a waiver, do your best, see what you can do. Sure enough, I got in the show and I landed the world first double front flip on a scooter, and I've been on ever since. Uh, at first, they gave me a bit of grief, but it just pushed me to do better. It was just a fuel for my fire, and I just pushed myself, and I'm still here today, so I, I guess I did something right. So my question is, are you ready? When I found out scootering was going to be in the Nitro World Games, I just it was just a huge relief, like all my hard work to, to represent scooters has paid off and finally we're in a massive competition on live television. It's just, it was, it was a true achievement for me and for scooters. My biggest competition for scooters would be anyone really. There's Jordan Clark here, he's throwing triple front flips like every go. There's the Funk Brothers, which have had some shows with Nitro Circus already throughout America. And there's Dakota, who's meant to be the world number one and the best in the world. So anyone can bring anything and uh, everyone's a threat. The other invited riders are the best in the world. They would love nothing more than to dethrone these two, but even they know they are facing legends in their sports. When we come back, we're gonna play the inline and scooter competitions in their entirety. Some huge tricks were thrown, many world's firsts were landed, underdogs rose, and a whole stadium was left wanting more. Both contests coming up when we return. You are watching Nitro World Games Rewind. We're about to kick off the inline competition where Chris Happy will face four athletes determined to win their first ever Nitro World Games. Man, Travis put his heart and soul into this, and I gotta say, when you walk into that stadium and see all this setup, it is mind-blowing. Like, just looking at it without anyone even riding it, so I couldn't be more proud of the guy to get this thing done. Like, it takes a guy with his vision to get something like this accomplished, and today is gonna be nuts. People were still rolling in. I think, you know, we said what time it started, but everyone's like, oh, in lines first. Whatever, you know, we'll get off work or do whatever, and that first athlete dropped in, did his trick, and the crowd erupted. It's like the train went off the track and everyone was standing on it. And at that point, it just started becoming a mob scene outside because they're like, what is going on in there? And everyone was just pushing through the doors to come see Inline Skate. Let's send it down to our announcers, Jake Hershey and Matt Mickey, to start our competition. All right, everybody, the madness is about to get underway. The excitement level is increasing. We're here at Rice Eccles Stadium, Salt Lake City, Utah, the inaugural Nitro World Games. These guys are each gonna get three runs. Two of their runs are gonna count, the top two scores. So they do have a second chance if they do fall in one of their runs. But like I said, the top two scores are gonna count and we are expecting to see some big tricks here today. Dave Lang, always hamming it up for the crowd. He's got that indelible long black hair, always pumping his fist. 80s rock star on blades here, dropping in with hella speed. Sick, double oh, grab, still 900. What was that, Matt? He laced it. Right out of the gates, he throws a double stale grab 900. Talk Just about energy. That is the way to start it off here at the Nitro World Games. 6.7 out of 10. Wake Shetman, our youngest competitor, who's actually recovering. This is his first competition after he got a concussion and had double vision. And that's not stopping him on that double misty flip, landing fakie or backwards. And dropping in next, we've got Romana Brat, 28 years old from France. Oh my goodness, oh. unbelievable. Double corkscrew 1080, almost flew off the ramp. Yes, this guy had a lot of speed and a lot of distance, but he laced it. So that's three landed tricks in a row for the inliners here. Next up out of Sydney, Australia, we've got CJ Wellsmore, AKA the Wombat. Unbelievable, what? abstract 900. 
Kolchak means he actually crosses his legs while spinning off axis in the air. Look how flat he is. That's called a corkscrew, and the cross legs mean abstract. Dropping in, we've got Chris Haffey, Nitro Circus Live veteran. Oh what? my goodness, double backflip 180, and he lands it perfectly. That was a mute grab, double backflip, oh. late 180 at the very last second. Chris Haffey is currently sitting in first place, and these guys are gonna have to do a lot to get back onto the podium. Dropping in for his second hit, Dave Lang, Millington, New Jersey. Oh, what? sick, double backflip 180. Showing Chris Haffey he's not the only one who's got that trick in his repertoire. Dropping in for his second hit, the youngster from Florida, Wake Shepman. Oh my goodness! Ooh. He was going for the 1620. Dropping in for his second hit here, the executive chef Romana Brat. Oh Ooh. my goodness! Double bio 900 there. Could you get any cleaner than that? What's amazing is that Roman came into this never hitting this ramp before in his life until a couple days ago. That's right. And now he's lacing tricks like that. You have got to be kidding me. All right. 6.97 moves Romana Brat into second place behind Dave Lang, pushing Wake Shepman to third. Up next, we've got CJ Wellsmore, the Aussie, I the Wombat on Blades. This guy's barrel chested. Oh, Ooh. wiping out there, trying that double flat spin 180. Chris Happy dropping in. Whoa! Double bio 540 to forwards there. So he's got two off axis rotations and then a late 180 to land forwards. And landing forwards is a lot more difficult on inline skates than many people would think. More difficult? Yes. And most vehicles you think landing forward is the easy way out. Not in this case, folks. Look at Chris running back up to the top. Man, you think these guys would be out of energy. First place, we've got Chris Haffey. Second place, Dave, Dave Lang. Lang. Third oh, place, Ramona Brat. Third and final runs have yet to come. Don't go anywhere. When we come back, we'll see who takes home first place in the first event ever of the inaugural Nitro World Games. Welcome back to Nitro World Games Rewind. We're nearing the end of the inline comp. Let's not waste any time and throw it straight back up to Jake and Matt in the booth. Welcome back. We're going to get right into the action. Third and final runs have yet to come. Oh! Misty flip to back flip. That was perfect. Two different invert variations in one single trick. The helmet's off. The hair is slashing. The horns are up. Bring Misty it. flip to back flip. Oh. Rolls away effortlessly. Dave Lang is playing this crowd like an 80s rock band lead singer, and rightfully so. If that was his release album, it's about to go platinum. Wake Shepman, the youngster, 19 years old out of Florida. 16, giving 20. it a go. Oh, and he what? landed it. Four and a half full revolutions, landing fakey or backwards, popping right into a 180 so he could spot that airbag. This is the first ever in competition. I, I can't believe, believe it. we have just witnessed the world's first 1620 landed here on inline skates at the Nitro World Games. Salt Lake City, Utah. Ooh. Unbelievable. Do you see how he crosses his arms and kind of keeps his body tight? <laughs> Get a little whiplash from the airbag. Yeah, These whiplash. These guys are going is... about 35 miles an hour into that thing. It definitely doesn't feel good. Judges do reward him handsomely with the 7.43, moving him into fourth place. Let's see what Roman is going to bring to the table. All the way from France. Oh, my goodness. What was that? That was... Double corkscrew 1260. One corkscrew, two corkscrews, and a late 360. Just pulling it around. He went upside down twice. There's Romana Brad hamming it up in front of the crowd. He is so stoked he just landed that trick. All and right. it puts him up in a second place. Wow. Which is a nice place to be sitting right now for the yes. Frenchman. We've got CJ Wellsmore dropping in for his third and final hit. Whoa, he oh. wanted that abstract corkscrew 1260 as well. Just washing out on the landing. This brings us to our final competitor, dropping in for his third and final hit. Chris Haffey, 30 years old. This is a glory run, coming in backwards. Oh, he wanted that fakey double backflip. You know what, Matt, it doesn't matter. Chris Happy, he is gonna take it all here today at the inline event at the inaugural Nitro World Games. 
I can't even put it into words, to be honest. Like, when I was watching what was happening, what I felt inside me was, like, unreal, dude. Like, I, nothing could come out of this and I would still be that stoked. So, I mean, for Rollerblading to be on this stage and put on that show is, is means the world to me. Oh, man, it's, it was awesome. It's, I'm going to remember this moment forever. And uh, I wish it's just the beginning. Uh, finger crossed. I'm like, I'm still like on such a high from like all the adrenaline, dude. All the riders just killed it. I'm just so stoked that rollerblading gets to be shown on this kind of event to this kind of scale. And I'm really hoping that, you know, the years to come, we're going to be able to keep pushing it and pushing it to the top, you know, and to be able to be up here on the podium with those guys is like a huge, huge honor. And I'm just, I'm really stoked to, to be a part of it. Yeah! Inline was amazing. Scooters are about to take it through the roof. We are here at Rice Cycle Stadium getting ready to start the scooter action. These guys are each going to get three runs. Two of their runs are going to count the top two scores. So they do have a second chance if they do fall in one of the runs. And we are expecting to see some big tricks here today. And Corey is getting hyped up. Here he goes. Get on your feet, folks. The action is about to begin. This is freestyle scootering. Oh, Unbelievable. Man. And to start it off, Corey Funk doing a tail whip to Buttercup late triple tail whip. Check it out. Dakota shoots from Temecula, California. This is his first time ever riding this gigantic ramp, and you can see why he's one of the top in the world. These are what we call kickless rewinds. He's not even kicking the scooter back and forth and lands back on it. That is five in a row, never been done before in the history of freestyle scooters. Oh yes, his game face is on constantly, along with Capron Funk, which right there. Whoa, it's cool for that. Was that a triple? That was a triple front flip. For his first hit. For the first hit. This is the first jump. These guys are not wasting any time. No. Triple front flip, Capron Funk. Let's not forget that not only are they battling the podium, but the Funk brothers are battling each other. That's right. So there's a battle within a battle here. And check this out, Jordan Clark, our youngest Whoa. competitor, the youngest 17 competitor. 17 years old. Doing a double front flip, no hander, taking his hands off halfway through. Check it out. I don't understand One, how he still pulls two, it around. With a no hander in there, adding an element of difficulty. Oh, man. And he came a long way to put his name up here. All the way from the United Kingdom, that was Jordan Clark. We got Ryan Williams up next. Matt, that is a Ryan Williams signature trick. It's called a Silly, silly Willy. Willy. Yes. If we're going to break it down, it's a 360 double front flip. Check this out, 180 front flip. And then almost doing a 180 back flip to pull it around. And unfortunately dragging his feet or one foot. So he's going to get a couple points off. But that is insane trick from Ryan Williams. We're gonna get right into the action here with run number two for the inline event. Well, Corey Funk is up next. We saw him do the tail buttercup triple in the first run. What is he gonna do here? Oh man! Madness! Do you see the control from this kid? Yes. That was a double backflip with a tail whip in the middle of it. It is one thing to be able to do a double backflip. But to hold on to it while your feet come off and that scooter whips around is insane, almost impossible. Check it out, Dakota shoots. What? Oh, oh no, Dakota shoots going down. Well, we saw Capron try the triple front flip in the first round. Can he get it here? One, two, three, and he does it. Unbelievable. What? Phenomenal. Absolutely perfect. You can see he is astonished. He is stoked. You got to check this out. Watch him spot the landing one, right there. Two, Again. last one, three. And nails it. Unreal. These are tricks we thought not possible even just last year. And look at that score, oh. 8.07. That's putting him right behind his brother, Corey. The battle of the front brothers continues. Jordan bringing the double front from no-hander. Oh. Was that back-to-back -back triple front flips? I can't believe it. We saw Capron just do the first one ever in competition, and Jordan comes right behind him and says, don't worry, I got it. No world's first is safe here with the top five scooter riders battling it out. What are we going to see here? A signature Ryan Williams trick? Whoa! Oh, my goodness. Matt, look how excited he is. That was a 1080 Super front pumped. flip. Not only is he excited, the stadium audience is going wild. Look, 360, 720, 1080, while doing a front flip. 
Oh man, if you have never seen freestyle scootering before, this is the place to see it because these guys are doing the biggest tricks in the world and bringing it to the biggest stage possible. The madness is only going to increase. Let's go down onto the floor where Lorette is with our Willie. You guys, thank you so much. Ryan Williams, his friends and fans know him as R. Willie. Ryan, one more run. What do you have in your big bag of tricks? So I just did a 1080 front flip. I think I'm gonna add another rotation and get a 1440 front flip. I've never tried it before, but this is the time to try it. Okay, also competing in BMX, what are your expectations? I'm just gonna go out, do the tricks I plan to do, hopefully stick them all, bring home the gold. Ryan, best of luck. Thank you so much. The scooter riders are throwing down. When we come back, we'll crown a winner. You are watching Nitro World Games Rewind. We're in the middle of the scooter contest. Let's get straight back into the action. And back at the top of the ramp, Corey Funk is ready to drop in for his final run. Let's see what he's got here, Jake. What? Oh, oh man, that is so unfortunate for the younger of the Funk brothers going for a double front flip tail whip. Check it out, Dakota shoots, is getting hyped up, here he goes. No lead is safe. Can he get it? Oh my Placed. goodness! Are you kidding me? Dead serious. Look at this, his feet land in the same spot he took off in yes. and rides away so clean. And he is gonna be is stoked on that one. Well, the score seeing. was good for Dakota Schutz. And let's see what Capron's gonna bring to the table. What? Amazing! Just when you think things can't get any crazier, Capron comes out with a trick like this. What do we have, Jake? It's a, he's doing a double backflip and throwing what we call an inward, or also known as a front bry flip, in the middle of it. This is a trick we've never even seen attempted before, and he's bringing it out to the biggest competition in the world and landing it first try. Look, he's in awe right now, and it's a 9.53. Yes, putting one. him in a first place. I cannot believe what I'm seeing. It was a world first in competition and in real life. What? What? Oh Jordan my goodness. Clark, the youngest competitor here today, throwing Bolt. down a trick like that. We saw him do a double front flip. We saw Capron do, I'm sorry, triple front That's flip. That's right. We saw Capron do a triple front flip, and now Jordan's doing a triple and taking his hands off. I didn't think we could get any crazier than this, and it just did. The level has been raised and the bar has been set. This is the Nitro World Games, and this is what it's all about. World's first, Jordan Clark, a 9.07, bumping him into second, second place. place. Just behind Capron Funk, incredible. Can you believe the wisdom and athleticism of even the youngest competitor out here at only 17 years old? Oh, he is in a ball. He is the total ball of energy. And right behind him, we, he called it out. 14.40 front flip. Can he land it? He's there. Oh, oh, man. Hitting the res. He's sliding out just a little bit. Matt, I think if he landed that, that would have put him in the first place. But R. Willie still has a, uh, another competition here yeah, today. He'll be competing in BMX. Let's go down and see what the guys on the scooter podium have to say. My name is Corey Funk, and I just got third place at the first ever Nitro World Games. Thank you very much, Travis. Well, I just got second place in the first ever Nitro World Games. I landed everything. I'm really happy with myself, and this is a dream come true. What, what it means to me is that I went through so much crap for riding a scooter, and now I'm here at the biggest event for action sports, and I just got first place, and just, you know, sh proving to myself that, you know, this is a real thing, and, and I just did it for me, and that's what's important. I am uh, a little bummed on my performance, but I'm so stoked the other guys managed to pull it out, and I mean, that's why there's a smile on my face, because it wasn't an individual thing, it was a team thing for me, and our team won. You know, I definitely, was surprised to see R. Willie um, crash. He hadn't really crashed in practice and you know didn't have put together what he would have liked to. I know his biggest focus was um, primetime bicycles and he had been riding a bicycle a lot more. For him, I think a loss in scootering was hard to take when he definitely expected to win. But the fact that he was able to do so much for scooter as an industry, I think he was pretty proud of himself. Yeah, I'm, def I'm definitely not done yet. The scooter comes down. Next up is BMX best trick. I qualified first, so I'm going into it, doing the same tricks, trying to get them dialed, and then adding a new one in the triple front flip. There's a saying, you should lose with the same grace you win. Ryan Williams exemplified that today. We'll have his story and all the highlights from the rest of the contest when we come back. Welcome back to Nitro World Games Rewind. We just showed you the inline and scooter comps in their entirety, and there's no doubt that they earned their spot in the games. We also had five other contests that night, and right now we're gonna show you the best of the best from each. 
We left off with our Willie finishing last in the scooter comp, but he's got another shot at a trophy in BMX Best Tricks. He's the only athlete in the World Games to compete in two separate disciplines. Would he use that as a motivator or would his disappointment consume him? I'm gonna throw it up to TJ Lavin and Jimmy Coleman in the booth to take it away. Welcome back to Nitro World Games here at Salt Lake City, Utah at the Rice Eccles Stadium. This event is BMX Best Tricks. Yeah, take everything that you know about BMX and throw it right out the window because this is a whole new sport. Triple backflips for breakfast. What do you think about that? This was our second place qualifier on the semifinals. This is Brandon Schmidt. Brandon Schmidt comes from a snowboarding background. He's one of those guys that said, you know what, I'm gonna get out of here trying to do this stuff on the bike. On the no one back. does that, no one does that. A backflip tail whip to backflip, and then he goes into the bag, comes back, and backflips for the fans. Andy Buckworth, another regular. He's one of the OG members of the Nitro Circus Tour out of Lake Haven, Australia. Yeah, he's going for the big kicker right here out of the gate. Going for a triple backflip as well. Lands it perfect, butter, no problem. This guy right here, Ryan Williams, he is a trick machine that is known for execution. Now that looks, that's like a bike flip, but it's- A it's, forward it's, bike flip. Yeah, it's a like a forward flip. bike flip with a front flip. So that's like a, a whole new invention of a bike flip coming from the scooter world, believe it or not. Yeah, yeah, that's insane. He's competed in two events out here tonight. Gavin Godfrey, he has been on fire out here this evening, TJ. Gavin Godfrey going for the big kicker. He wants that triple backflip. And Lands he gets perfect. it. Perfect. Perfect landing. This kid is unbelievable. People are trying triple backflips because it's a high school. They've never done a triple before, and they're walking away. And I feel like for Nitro World Games, we want to see the biggest. We want to see the best. 9.25. Brandon Schmidt coming your way. Oh, what this just guy. happened there? What is this guy doing? <laughs> Every single time he goes down the ramp, it's a new invention. I don't even know what is going on. I don't know what to call that, but I like it. This is Ryan at Williams. What was that? What is that? I, I that is like that a that get on the replay. trick. Like, what are you doing right there? A 720 front flip. I mean, that's insane. This is a good time, Gavin Godfrey. Here we go. Gavin Godfrey's been hard charging here tonight. Oh, what is going on with this guy? Is that an off axis that double backflip? 360 double backflip. Oh my gosh, what is this kid doing? TJ was just beside himself going, wait, he's only ridden a BMX bike for how long? Like, do you know how hard it is to switch from a mountain bike to a bicycle? Good time Gavin could not mess up. And that's on a new bike, on a new landing, on a new takeoff. It was inspiring. R. Willie, what's he got on tap for? What? Here? <laughs> what? <laughs> he's just gonna let go of the bike and, and then catch it. it. Never in a million years would I think I would see that trick done at a competition. Perfect. That was awesome. That was so sick. That's his best run of the night. That puts him in first place as of right now. Couldn't be more proud, man. I'm like almost about to cry. I mean, we got packed house, awesome audience back here in Salt Lake where Nitro started. This is where our roots are, man. And everyone is so pumped. They're throwing down. It's the only contest that I've been to in so many years where the athletes are just amped to be out there and no one is holding back. And that is what best trick contest, that is what World Games is all about. Curtis Downs, he's sniffing on the edge of the podium. He's one spot outside. Needs an 8.5 for second place. What is he going to bring to the party here in this fifth and final run? Oh. A quad whip backflip! A quad whip backflip! The first time that's ever been done. I don't even think it's been done on a video game, bro. That's FBD. the craziest thing I've ever seen. Never been done before. That was four times around? I think so. I think so. One. Got him out. Two. Three. Four. Oh. A quad whip backflip. This guy just landed a perfect pedals. Quad whip backflip. That has never been done. I guarantee you that's the first time we've ever seen anything like that. That was amazing. He gets an 8.53. Oh, that slides him up to second. Andy Buckworth gets bumped out of the top three, so now it's Williams, Downs, and Godfrey, your top three. I cannot even process the things that we are seeing out here tonight, TJ. All right, Ryan Williams, he took the top spot. How do you do that? 
do that. That's impossible. No BMX rider would ever even think that was possible, ever. That yeah, was amazing. He was already in the lead, and then he throws a 1080 front flip into the mix here. Let's see what this goes for. That is, I believe that is the highest single run score we've seen tonight with a 9.74. What an amazing night that young man has had. Let's check in now with Lorette Nickel, who's down there with our Willie. Ryan Williams, you may have single-handedly broken so many stereotypes. How much passion and dedication does this win represent? This is the biggest win in my life. I can't explain the feeling I have right now. It's insane. This is crazy. <laughs> I really, you told me that a win here could be the biggest moment of your life. What is your mindset before you are dropping in? I just believe in myself. I tell anyone at home, all you need is belief in yourself and you can do anything, I swear. Definitely for a scooter rider to get last in scooters and then win the biggest big air bicycle contest in the world uh, moments later was, was pretty rad. I honestly can't even believe it right now. My eye keeps twitching if you can't tell. It's still like sporadic, but I just can't believe to be here and just be on top. So yeah, it's my hometown, Salt Lake City, you know. I had to represent some way, but I'm so excited just to be in Salt Lake and it's a blessing. It was so much fun. When we come back, we're gonna fire up the bikes and give you the very best of the FMX comp. You don't wanna miss it. Welcome back to Nitro World Games Rewind. Now it's time for the FMX riders to impress. We have eight of the best in the world all battling for the top spot in the first ever Nitro World Games. Biggest competition I think is hands down Cheney. He didn't, he missed a trick yesterday, but he's still qualified and I know he's, he's always the guy to beat, you know? So yeah, I'm looking forward to watching him ride though. Australian superstar Josh Sheehan is the first to hit the ramps and get this freestyle motocross final started. Big old school. Speaking of Kevin Winter, that was kind of a K-Dub whip there. <laughs> it did look like a Kevin whip. He rotates with the heel 360 clicker. 360 heel clicker there. Big combo there, the heel clicker to Superman backflip. See the, the ramp sitting over there actually camps. <laughs> Look at that double backflip, stomps it down almost perfectly. Everything went really well and just yeah, trying to do piece by piece, trick by trick to not worry about the double flip. And then when I came to the end, I was just coming into the ramp. Felt good about it, so I'm yeah, stoked, happy. As Harry Bing from the Gold Coast of Australia takes the course. Beautiful execution there. Harry Bink, I can't say enough positive about this kid. He is going to go on to dominate the freestyle world. He works hard. He does the biggest rock solid backflips you've ever seen, and he holds it. Even if he's coming up short, he gets his extension. He makes sure that every trick that he does exemplifies what that perfect trick should be. And then, whoa, front flip, no hander. First time we've seen that out there right now. Look at Sheehan, he's just like, what? And for him to go out and have never landed a front flip over the 75 foot with no bag, no resi, no anything during his run, hands down the coolest thing I saw all week. You just saw an amazing progression of the sport. No handed front flip. As we see right now, Taka, he was your second highest qualifier coming in, only surpassed by Levi Sherwood, who is still to come after Taka. And he does on the 120 footer a rock solid, a very solid rock solid. And Talk is actually running in the lead right now, the virtual lead as he does a big KOD flip. Talk needs a 10.12, which is possible with this trick. What's he got? Double grab on the 120. Then 
the Cali roll from the innovator of the Cali roll and throws in some Taka style there to finish off. Higashino moves to the second position with only one rider left, so he's in position for podium. But right now, Josh Sheehan sets on top in 82.70. Levi Sherwood from New Zealand. I like to call him the rubber band man. Watch the extension. Watch what he's capable of doing. And a huge turntable with so just exuding so much style. <laughs> At least here's the 120 foot ramp. Dead body! Oh, he, held that. <laughs> he held that so long. Longest I've ever seen that trick held by double, I think. 8.3. Solid. And then that is, I think he's calling that the flaming mullet. It grabs back on a C grab hole. And then double oh. grab, backflip. Filthy. The, the extension was wow. so beautiful. He needed no. a 7.46 to take the lead. I, I think he's going to take the lead right now. I do too. 8.63, Levi Sherwood comes from behind and takes the win. Levi Sherwood, what are the emotions like to know that you helped progress the sport and tonight made history? Dude, I don't even know. I'm still shaking. So to win this and then being the first ever night show world games, Inside. Probably the rider that impressed me the most was Levi Sherwood. Levi didn't have to put in the run that he put in, but he did because he's so passionate. Levi almost crashed four of his 10 jumps because he was holding so far off the bike, so much more extension than he's ever done, landing and just giggling. I'm down on the field and like, he's literally like a little schoolgirl coming around like, <laughs> did you see that? I landed it. And that's what it's about for me. It's not about what's it gonna take to win. It's about how big can I throw this? And what can I do that's so much better than anyone else? And Levi did that on every jump. You are watching Nitro World Games Rewind. We are showing you the best of the best from each of the five contests that aired live. We are now moving as fast as the live show went down. As soon as one event ends, we pick up with the next. Over on the Giganta ramp side, the skateboarders threw down some amazing runs in Skate Best Trick. Pretty crazy to be a part of the first event, the Nitro World Games. It's come a long way. I know they've been working on it for a while, and now it's finally here, and I'm stoked to be a part of it. A guy you may have heard of, Tony Hawk, and yours truly made the call. We're gonna start things off with Clay Kreiner. Moved on from two wheels to four. Here we go. Gonna have to really bring it Indy 720. Wow! Wow, perfect. So we move on to 13-year-old Evan Dory coming out of Valley Center, California. Coming in switch, switch, backside 180. Wow. Very perfect. 13 years old. Trey Wood. 720. There it Perfect. is. Perfect. Look at that. Ooh, into the airbag. Clay Kreiner needs a 7.36, a perfect one, to take the lead. There's Clay with that stale fish backflip again. Wow. Such a great looking trick. I think he's going to get the maximum score for that one. So, Clay, perfect extension on that. Just look at the ski. Look at that. Switch up here. These guys have one last attempt. Mitchy Brusco dropping in. Mitchie going for that kickflip melon 360. That's the one he wanted. There it is. Trying that every time. Now it's Elliot Sloan is up next. Let's see what he's got. There we go. Look at that Indy 720. Perfect wow. nose bone. Perfect landing. And it's a great looking nose bone all the way through, too. Gets the cork, drops that shoulder, kind of cheats the rotation a little bit, but comes around absolutely flawlessly. Elliot Sloan's perfect corked out 720 earns him the top spot on the podium ahead of Clay Kreiner and Trey Wood. Congrats to all the skaters for sending it with style. Let's hear from our champ, Elliot Sloan. Hey, I'm Elliot Sloan. I just won the first ever Nitro World Games. One of the most entertaining and fast paced contests of the day was BMX Triple Hit. Again, I'm handing it off to TJ and Jimmy for the call. Thanks, guys. Well, over here at BMX Triple Hits, the event is appropriately titled. Why? Because the hits are going to be big, and they're going to be coming in rapid-fire succession. Alex Colbord need a big score to take this thing home tonight. 360 triple tail whip into a truck driver to 360. This is an insane trick right here on that last set. That's, that's like dream trick land. All right, well, Mr. Sandoval is going to have the chance to answer back. Do not cut this gentleman out. He's got some explosive combo tricks. 
He started with his front wheel already, already down the landing, so he didn't have enough speed. So that way he could do that big laid out front flip. Wow. Kid putting it together. This is Logan Martin. Logan Martin with a backflip tail whip. He wanted something else oh. there. But into a triple tail whip, into a front flip tail whip. Now, this is perfect execution. So, depending on the DOD score, which is the degree of difficulty, we'll see if this guy moves up. Man, that was a very good run. He wanted something else on that backflip tail whip to something. It was going to be something. So then he did a triple tail whip instead on that second set. I went quad. That quad was four times whip. around. That was a quad whip. Oh, my God. A quad whip into a front flip tail whip. Are this, you kidding me, We might TJ? just saw our new leader right now. I am the destructor. Colton Walker sitting down there in sixth place, but uh, this guy's been pushing the progression of ramp riding lately. So much talent on the deck. That's a backflip bar spin to tail whip. Oh, 360 double tail with the truck driver, no problem. Then he pulls off that tail whip. I think that was a bar spin or an X up. I'm not sure. I got to see on the replay because it was just way too fast. Dirt jump legend Cam White with that backflip bar spin to tail whip. Then he does a 360 double tail whip to bar spin and then does a bar spin tail whip all in the same jump. Oh, look at the right hand. Fumbling for the grip, TJ. Did you see that? Insane run. Oh my goodness, a 9.22. So we have another lead change. So Colton Walker takes over the top spot. That was insane. It felt like any one of those guys could have won. Congrats to Colton Walker for putting together such an epic run. Let's hear what he had to say. How did you get through it? Um, I just, I had all my runs planned and then that one worked out good. That's one of the most amazing feelings ever when you have something in your head and you do it. I can't even speak right now, I'm so excited. But. Triple hit absolutely blew my mind. It was the event that I was least excited uh, to see beforehand because we didn't really have resis, but we just took the, the biggest jumps that we knew worked and we put it out there for all the guys to practice. I mean, Brandon Lupos, backflip tail whip, 1080 on the second set, cash roll third set. Those are three tricks that should never be done on the big air ramp, let alone, I mean, consecutively in a run where you gotta land perfect to take off and do the next one. So uh, I think triple hit was a, a huge success and definitely way exceeded my expectations. When we come back, a competition so epic they'll be talking about it for years, including a world's first attempt so dangerous it brought Travis Pastrana to tears. FMX best trick is coming up. You are watching Nitro World Games Rewind. We are coming to the end of our historic journey through the greatest night in action sports. I'm so stoked that it's finally time to get into FMX Best Trick, where every jump has huge consequences. I've never been more nervous watching an event uh, than I was FMX Best Trick. We, we had a safer landing, uh, but the jump, I mean, the, the landing's 22 foot tall. Um, and it was 45 degrees steep. There's only two tricks in this entire contest that have ever been done before. And then it goes to a new ramp, one that we've been designing for the last three years. These guys are gonna be going 55, 60 feet in the air. It's the first time that any of them are going to be trying these tricks to an actual landing. We are gonna send it over to Cam and Andy with the call. Let's get it on. A new rider we're not familiar with, uh, William Vanderpoot and uh, this is way, going right into it. Way back. He nailed it right on. Absolutely nailed the landing. And look at that extension away from the motorcycle cam. He gets a bit off axis, and, but is able to pull it in. You can see he has to reel it in just a bit. But that is what we're talking about. The progression, taking it to another level, something different, something you haven't seen before. And his first time ever putting it onto a landing. Oh, I'm so proud for Van Poot. He's been struggling with that trick. He's been at my house just working his butt off and it paid off. Now we got Mark. He's about to go do this. This is the opposite of a special flip. It is a Superman seat grab go into a front flip. This is the biggest stage that Mark has ever been on and he's coming at the ramp right now. Oh, Perfect. And he does it. Absolutely oh, could not be better. That is such, such a technical trick. It's a Superman seat grab. And as he flips forward, there's just no way to see anything. This is something that is going to have a very, very high degree of difficulty. It looks simpler than some of the front flips, but that was awesome. And rolling in, the course is his, and we'll see. Salutes the crowd. Oh! oh. So <laughs> 
Oh, 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 Dude, we're jumping up and down up here. The, the, wait until you see this trick from the side angle. First guy to congratulate him. Look at that. Hits the mechanical kicker, and he gets out. <laughs> Look at the extension. That wow. is ridiculous. And he holds it. Half of the trick he holds it comes around. Looked like it wanted to throw him over the front on the landing. Pat Bowden salutes the crowd here in Salt Lake City. Sheehan headed for the double back. Come on, Josh. Oh, massive extension, and he rides out of it perfectly. Absolutely nails. And that was like a kiss of death, backflip, kiss of death to backflip again, the double backflip. And, and we have seen some right amazing things. Watch this extension. Oh, 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 look at that, kiss of death. Wow. Brings it around, perfectly sticks the landing, and that has to be a 10. Our next competitor is about to attempt the most dangerous trick in action sports, a trick that changed FMX Pro Bruce Cook's life forever. Greg Duffy from Turston, Maryland, um, competing in FMX Best Trick. Going to try a double front flip. I've never been so scared in my life after you know, having gone through it and watched uh, Bruce Cook, everyone ran over to him and I just stood there. I didn't want to go see. I didn't want to hear what was possibly wrong. A part of me knew the fact that he instantaneously couldn't feel his legs, that he was paralyzed. After the Bruce Cook crash, I honestly, in my heart, felt like no one would ever attempt this uh, trick again. And to be honest, I did not want to see it be done again. This is absolutely amazing. And here we go, double front flip. It looks like we're not waiting on this. Double front flip. Greg Duffy, we didn't even get out of it. <laughs> he just rode out of it. Double front flip. He has put his heart, he has put his soul. The most <laughs> insane thing I've ever thought. Bruce Cook, I know you're watching at home, man. Love you guys. You know, the, the guy put his hand up to say, we're on a hold and Greg just went anyway. Cameras weren't ready, riders weren't ready, I wasn't ready, and all of a sudden he's in the air doing a double front flip. No build up, no anything. And when he rode out of that, I lost it. I just absolutely, I came unglued because that was something that everyone said should never be tried again. Finishing what Bruce Cook started. I'm pumped, man. There's, uh, I'm at a loss for words. Just uh, so much going through my mind. Can't thank everybody enough. Travis, uh, Mike Pora, Jeff Cernix, and uh, everybody else. Thank you. I can't believe what I just saw. Did that really just happen? Congrats to all the competitors. What an amazing event. And to think this was only the first year. My desire to make the Nitro World Games, the biggest, best trick event in the world by giving it bigger takeoffs and safer landings. The riders were actually really excited. They were excited they weren't fearing for their lives, that they could go bigger and do stuff that the crowd was on their feet, jaw dropping, and they weren't worried they weren't going to be able to get up if they did something wrong. And I feel like that got the vibe back to what it used to be when the riders were just out there having a good time. but. For a first year, I think it went off way better than anyone could have expected or hoped for. And there you have it. Year one is in the books of Nitro World Games. Too many highlights to mention and so much to look forward to at the next one. Thank you for watching Nitro World Games Rewind. We'll see you next year. Yeah.